everyone welcome back to another video and this week I am in wonderful beautiful sunny LA and I am staying in Beverly Hills because my customer is just a few miles away uh, but I got a little free time after work and we're gonna do some street photography so with that Let's get it. This week I had the DJI Osmo Pocket 3 with me and the Fuji X100 Mark VI. Just further testing if this is really going to be enough gear to bring to Italy with me next month. So far it's holding up to my expectations. Had some issues in low light but very little. I'm hoping this kit's gonna hold up and it's gonna be the kit that I take to Italy with me because it's such light, so light. Everything fits in this bag like I've showed you before. So it's, it's awesome. But yeah, that's, so anyway, so that's what I'm saying. Like I want a small kit to take, something that I can travel light with. It fits easily in my laptop bag with my laptop so I can edit video and photo on the go. It's, uh, it sounds like the great scenario. Yo, yo. <laughs> but um, what's the sad scenario? You guys know what I'm talking about. So it sounds like the perfect scenario. We shall see. More testing is needed. And that's what I'm doing this week. But first I gotta get some grub. I am hungry. All right, I'll catch you in a little bit, guys. Beverly Hills LA area I spent all last night making videos for you guys in my room and editing photos now I'm gonna do a little more uh, street photography here in the morning for my flight so let's get it guys so I wanted to talk about some of the little quirks I've seen so far with the X106 um, I've been testing it for a month now and since I've had it and um, so far it's been a mixed bag there's been mostly good but definitely some bad I keep walking in and out of the Sun here it's not great video but I'm doing the best I can <sighs> Got scared by a scoop scoop. Uh, it's been a mixed bag, and I, what I mean by that is the street photography and perfect lighting conditions, or any photography for that matter, perfect lighting conditions, this thing's gonna perform and perform like a beast. But I'm walking uphill, guys. Sorry about the huffing and puffing. I need to get my ass in better shape. But um, but I will say that at night there were some autofocus issues. There was some uh, soft imaging due to that and the eye just really didn't hold up as I've seen and when I did a night, night photography of Phoenix. That being said, um, that being said, even though it didn't hold up, uh, I still enjoyed the images I got even though the sun were soft, they were still usable still in my opinion. Um, the images don't have to be perfect every time guys. So Ibis is you know, I still need to do some more testing, but Ibis is starting to let me down a little bit, and, and so is the autofocus at night. And then here this week in LA, the uh, cameras performed very well. Now, when I was in the higher sun areas, I did try to put it in aperture priority mode, and I tried to use that mode to, um, you know, so that I could quickly switch between shade and light without there being so many issues, but. It just it seems the aperture priority or when you leave the camera up to deciding exposure it tends to err on the side of overexposing and that's not my jam I don't need to be I don't want it to be overexposed I like dark and moody not overexposed bright and shiny so I've been having to even when I do run an aperture priority which is the shutter set to a ISO set to auto ISO 
and my aperture is what I'm setting. When I do that, I run exposure compensation down two thirds of a stop. And that allows me to get the image that I need to get and still run in semi-auto mode and not have to worry about constant changing light conditions. Because like that pull going out of my head right now. <laughs> anyway, so I say I'll just say that this camera's not perfect. Don't let anyone tell you that it is perfect, because it is not. That's okay. Cameras aren't going to be perfect. There's always going to be quirks. When you have a compact system like this, a compact camera system like this, the lens is not going to have the latest autofocus motor technology. It's tiny. It's probably a stepper motor. And it, it does, it is loud at times when it's focusing. And it does move in and out. And for me, it does seem like a little slow to focus at times when I, as because of that, especially at night and in lower light, in lower, lower light situations. Anyhow, all right, I'm, I'm rambling. All right, guys, it's turning out to be a bust. I took a left, just hoping I'd see something different than I had the last couple of days. And I should have taken a right and went back to Rodeo Drive area because I'm just basically in high value homes and that's not street photography. I mean, it kind of, it can be, but nah, just not feeling it. But it's a point, come, it brings me to a point that I want to make though, that, you know, it's, you're not always going to get great shots. You got to be willing to go out there, take a chance, look, do something new and go from there and see what happens. That's what I did today. Didn't work out. It's not something that a lot of photographers talk about. I'm up to around 300 images on this trip so far, and I'm probably going to keep about five of them. So just don't get discouraged if you go out for an hour or two, you don't get anything you like. It happens. We all go through that. Pro level photographers, amateurs, intermediates, all of us. So just don't get discouraged, guys. Like I'm not right now. I'm hoping I can get at least one more shot, one more good shot before I have to head for the airport. And I'm walking back to the hotel and I'm hoping, camera in hand. All right, that's it guys. I'll talk to you later. Back to the studio. All right, guys, welcome back to the channel and welcome back to the studio. Wow, LA was fun. Let's get into the Fuji X106. After almost six weeks of ownership, I want to discuss my initial impressions so far. Uh, so good, but let's get into the details. So I do feel while I can't comment on the long-term build quality, I can comment on my initial impressions, initial thoughts, how the camera performs, and you know, hopefully it'll help you make a decision on whether you wanna continue holding out while it's on back order or get something different, which we'll discuss near the end of the video. So the first, things, first thing I wanted to go over is handling and weight. Uh, the handling, as you, would, as you would assume, is great. It's a very lightweight camera. It's very easy to hold in your hand. Despite limited ergonomics, it really doesn't need it with the how light it is. It's, it's extremely easy to hold. Uh, I didn't have any issues taking it out for five, six, seven, eight hours, uh, holding it with a Peak Design strap, and that's it. I uh, didn't use the next strap. I would put it in my sling bag every now and then when I switched to the DJI, but for the most part, I used it handheld the entire day without issues on several outings. So the ergonomics, the handling, they're good for the size of the camera. And, and most importantly, and most importantly, it's the ergonomics are fantastic because it allows you to put it in a small bag or a pocket, a uh, coat pocket and carry it with you. So the next thing I wanted to just briefly go over is autofocus. Um, I've talked about autofocus in several videos, but to sum things up, the autofocus is fantastic and good light. 
I did notice some slow autofocus and some noisy autofocus, uh, some hunting, if you will, in the lower light and at night. That could have been due to the filter that I'm using. I did take that off. Oh, let me get, let me show you the camera. I did take the filter off and uh, I bought a UV filter to put on there just to protect it and water seal it. And it comes with this cool cap. So let me get, let me get that one second. So I'm back. All right, so here's the camera with this cap on here. I wanted to show you this because I am sick and tired of the, if you put a, the filter adapter on and you put the fil a filter on, the lens cap will not stay on, which is okay, but it, it does make it difficult to carry and protect the front. I know that the filter's already doing that, but let me show you this cool one. So this is from k &F. It's a UV filter, but it comes with this magnetic, magnetic. That's it. It's that easy, guys. And now you're protecting it. It's easy to take on, easy, easy to take on. It's easy to put on and it's easy to take off. So I would highly advise, I'll put the links in the description, highly advise you check out this filter. I highly advise that you buy the filter adapter kit to seal, to seal your camera and you're gonna need a filter. You can buy the one from Fuji, but you don't have this cool option. KNF makes great filters and this magnetic filter cap is hands down amazing. I am clipping sometimes. Let me stop. I'm trying a new mic setup today too. I have my, my lab mic just on a tripod, hobo style. Make sure I get it out of the shot. And it's set down facing me. I'm just tired of having the stuff around my damn neck. So let's see how it goes. All right, so that takes us through autofocus. Next thing I wanted to talk about, summarize, is uh, IBIS. Again, I've talked about this in several videos. The in-body image stabilization is not really working for me yet. I don't feel like it's that big of an improvement over a the X100V. I tried shooting at night at 1 over 60, not even that slow if you ask me on the shutter, and I had some issues with softer, slow, or softer images. It could have been due to the autofocus as well. It could not just be only IBIS. So I'm gonna do more testing during the day at slower shutter speeds to really see if the IBIS holds up. We're gonna see, but for now, my initial impressions are a mixed bag with the IBIS. I've gotten fantastic images during the day. It's really only at night that I saw the hunting here and there. And then that takes us to image quality, which I said, I got fantastic images during the day. I did a ZF, Nikon ZF, which is a full frame 24 megapixel backside illuminated sensor versus the X106, which is a APS-C 40 megapixel backside illuminated sensor. I found that the images were so close that you could not tell the difference unless you pixel peep or you knew the files or you, you had the metadata. That's really all it was. You, if you don't have that information, there's nothing you can do to tell what these files are. And that just led me to believe that the image quality on the X106 is top notch. For a, a compact camera like this, this thing is tiny. And that get great images like we're able to get with something so small, it's hands down the best camera for its size you could buy and i i know that you guys are like okay but you know it's not the do it all you're going to need new lenses you're going to need this you're gonna need that you're right you're right it's not the do it all it shouldn't be the only camera you own unless you're just a, a hobbyist it it fills a certain need for me it street photography and travel photography i'm going to use my zf or z8 or xh2 or any type of camera like that when i'm doing something that's i'm going to get i'm getting more serious about like filming these youtube videos i'm not going to film those on the x106 for example all right rant over next topic low light performance you guys know what i'm going to say here i've already started talking about it the low light performance has just been okay i got some more some more testing to do initial impressions are a mixed bag i'm gonna leave it at that I don't want the fanboys to come after me in the comments. So that so that brings me back to my summation of, of my initial six weeks with the X106 are I absolutely love the camera. I knew I was going to. I had the X100V after all. I've had almost every Fuji released in the last two generations, except for the medium formats. And at the end of the day, I, I know I was going to love this camera, I, I but I did not, I do not want you all to think 
that it, it is the savior to cameras. It's not, it's not, it doesn't warrant the price tag that it's going for right now. You really should look at some other options, in my opinion. Um, so taking all this consideration, I, you would be very happy with the X106. The image quality of 40 megapixels, the combination of the new IBIS system and better autofocus, the hybrid viewfinder, the built-in ND filter, it's got a lot of great options and it's a great camera for what it is and for the use case that I'm going to use it for. Absolutely hands down great. I think personally it's much more of a joy to use more than any other camera that I've ever used and that's why I think it's a great camera. It's just a pure enjoyment, fun, takes me, takes me back to the nostalgia days of film and I just love using this camera. And the best camera is the camera you have with you and due to the size it allows it to be the camera you can always have with you. Aside from a Leica, you know, M product, I don't find that there's any other camera on the market, maybe an X Pro uh, lineup as well, that can really beat this as far as just the in, just the enjoyment you get out of using this camera. But, but, I say all that to say that there's certainly better options on the market for this price point. On eBay, this camera's going for like $2,500, $2,500. And I got a list, list right here of, that are better cameras that you could get for that. You could get the X-T5 with the 23 millimeter F2. That'd give you pretty much the same camera for $2,150 and you can grow in that camera body. You could get the X-S20, uh, which is a great video camera and a very good photo camera. Uh, you could get the, S, the Lumix S5, which has pretty poor autofocus in that contrast detect but it's a phenomenal film camera and a great full frame uh, camera you can get it with a 50 millimeter f uh, for 1550. you can get the s5 the lumix s5 and the 50 millimeter f18 for cheaper than this is new msrp let alone what's going for in the black market and, that, and you can also get an xt30 and a 23 millimeter f2 which would be okay um maybe not quite as good as the 40 megapixel sensor but pretty good and you're not going to notice the difference and then finally you can get the older model the first generation a7c which is a 24 megapixel full frame sensor and the 40 40 millimeter f 25g lens and you'd have a really compact setup as well for maybe 2150 still less than you could get it get this x106 new on ebay so I just say all that to say that there's a lot of great options out there that will all take fantastic images and almost every one of those options will do better video, maybe minus the X-T30. So just think about that. So think about what your use case is. Don't, don't fall into the hype train. Think about your use case. I got this camera from my specific use case, which is street photography and travel photography. I have a DJI Pocket 3 to do vlogs with, so I don't need a separate video camera. I was trying to get this one camera to rule them all for everything, and I just found that the ZF, for example, was too wobbly. The IBIS didn't, didn't perform, so it just didn't work as a do-it-all camera. The Z30 wasn't good at photo. Uh, it was really good at video, uh, good enough, but it didn't do photo well enough. So. You know, I had to end up getting two different things, but they're two different, very small things with the DJI Pocket 3 and the X106 that fall fit into this really nice sling bag that none of the other camera options would fit into. So I'm very happy with it. I don't want you to fall into the hype train because this isn't the do it all camera. There are other better options that, that maybe you would, you could use depending on the type of photography you're trying to get into. And if, and if you're trying to get into videography, there's so many better options. You want this flippy screen like I have here on the X-H2. You don't want a tilt screen like this, not a two-way especially. I love this camera and you will too. Take everything I said into consideration. Think about what you really want. And if you want any suggestions, I'll be more than happy to help you out. Like I said, I've used every single major brand minus Lumix, uh, but I have several friends that have used Lumix and, and given me their feedback. I have a full well-rounded opinion on all these brands and i'll be more than happy to give you an opinion that's it for this week let me know in the comments if you got any questions if you want to know any, anything more about the x106 or, or anything else that i've discussed today if you if, if you don't mind throwing this a thumbs up uh, and if you're thinking about throwing the thumbs down just uh just just uh, don't <laughs> because it really affects our youtube algorithms just leave me a comment give me some constructive feedback 
Don't just give me a thumbs down, guys. Come on. Also, I wanted to let you guys know as well. Also, I wanted to let you guys know as well that I'm starting a, another YouTube channel. I know I only have like 300 subscribers and I'm already starting another YouTube channel, but you know, I have more to say. Um, I love tech and all things tech. And I really wanted to bring that to you guys. I wanted to discuss things like, you know, cell phone reviews. I want to talk about like these headphones, some of my favorite headphones in the world. Um, talk about, like, I don't have, I'm not going to talk about everything I just was sitting on my desk, but uh, talk about things like I got a new gaming chair coming. I'm building a PC from scratch. And I want to, you know, show you guys how to build a PC from scratch, what to do from open to close, things like that. Uh, that I try to mix on this channel and it does not do well. And so I want to keep this channel about street photography and all things photography. And I want to bring you some tech stuff from my early adopter, former field engineer ways and uh, hope you enjoy it. All right, guys, that's it for this week. I'm out of here. I'll see you later. Don't forget to subscribe, like, comment, follow, do all the things. I'm out of here. Peace.